Welcome back to Open Line tonight here at the half hour. If you're just joining us, thank you very much. Councilman Steve Glover is my guest tonight. We are talking about the school board, also the contract uh, for Dr. Sean Joseph. There is a vote tomorrow at the school board to terminate his contract. And News Channel 5 investigates learned today that he has started to clean out his office and that contract buyout talks are in the work. So things are moving, they are happening, and they are changing by the day. And of course, we're going to continue to follow it and be on top of it here at News Channel 5. But we want to hear from you. This is Open Line. Uh, we've done a lot of talk talking in the last hour. We want to hear from you as well. I'm going to go to uh, Reverend Fuzz. Been waiting on the line for a while. Good evening, Reverend. Hey, good evening. I've got a question and I won't take long. Okay. Last year, I followed the uh, council budget hearings mm -hmm. and I know that Dr. Joseph asked for something like $890 million and the council cut that by $50 million or something like that. And I would say we hired this man to tell us what's needed to make our schools work. He says what's needed, and we tell him that we're going to give you $50 million less than what you asked for. Does that, do you think, have something to do with the problems we're having? Thank you. Fair question. Thank you, Reverend Fuss, for bringing that up. So, Reverend, you and I are, are very good friends. Um, you know, first of all, the, the dollar amount that was asked for was presented to the mayor. The mayor then presented the council a budget far less than what he asked for. Uh, it's not a question of if the council gave the money, because you know as well as I do, I showed places we could cut inside of the budget to fund things. I also spoke with uh, Dr. Joseph about things that could be cut at the school board in order to accomplish things. Now, I'm not going to go into that particular thing because the council doesn't have a say on what the school board does. Uh, but, you know, I, yeah, you, you've known me for a long, long time. I never back off of making sure we take care of kids. Uh, you know, I'm watching what they're asking for right now. I don't know what's going to be real, what's not real, but it takes a collective bargaining as far as how do we come in the middle and how do we actually fit the financial piece of it. Does the Metro Council give the pot of money and the school board decide how to allocate it? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to the school board to say this much goes to teachers, right. this much goes to programming, this much goes to whatever, whatever, whatever. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Let's go to uh, Joe, who is on the line. Joe, you with us? Hello. Hi, Joe. Go ahead. Joe, you got to listen to. Go ahead. Out, I mean, he, he, he continues to say that he has no plan. He, he has no idea. He's not smart enough to figure it out. You know, who is? Like, who's smart enough to figure out what's going on here? If we give the teachers a twenty percent raise are, are they going to be able to, to, to be held accountable to that like you have to you have to think also that teachers also have more time off than than the firefighters than than the policemen because they have their summer like a lot of their summer times off and a lot of times off so it, like how much do we want to give the teachers and not hold them accountable to teaching the kids if we want to educate children we need to hold the teachers accountable to that. And I don't know why nobody's talking about that. How do you propose, well, well, I guess, how do you think they're not being held accountable? Let's go with that. They're, because we don't have a rating system for teachers. There's no rating system. Well, I think that's part of the state test and that's what teachers have mm -hmm. argued isn't fair. Um, but that, that is part of the state test to be able to show teacher evaluations and how they're doing in the classroom, you know, as related to student success. So there is, there is a system right. in place. I don't think the teachers like that because they say there's a lot of factors that they can't control. Um, but there is a system right. in place. But the, but the teachers can also send letters home to the parents and control some of that. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. I mean, if, if the kids, if the kids, not wanting to learn, then we send letters home to the teacher or to the parents and say, look, your, your child's just not willing to learn. Yeah, and then what? And, and, and then it's up to the parent. People need to sit down and have a real conversation about how much money, if we pay the teachers a million dollars a year and, and, and the kids still aren't learning, at what point do we stop? 
Well, yeah, I mean, I think that, that thank you, Joe, for chiming in. I think that we're, we're a long way from paying teachers a million dollars a year. I think that would be a very fair question if we were. Um, but I think that you and I have both talked to teachers. We have seen what is happening amongst our youth, and it's not all 87,000 kids in metro schools, but we have, we have a lot of students who do not have two parents at home, who have one parent that is either out working multiple jobs or just absent and not parenting. Um, so sending a letter home, probably not going to have much effect in a lot in a lot of households unfortunately for one reason or another and I don't think that should be reflected on the teachers agreed well so am I allowed to make somebody mad right now well <laughs> because, has that ever stopped you before no, it has not <laughs> so here's the bottom line you know if we're going to hold teachers accountable for where students fall short you know at what point do we actually hold the parents right. accountable right for where students fall short mm -hmm. you know there is if we're gonna if we're gonna sit down and we're gonna we're gonna say to teachers look if you don't do your job this way if you don't do this if you don't do that you're not gonna have a job anymore when do we put the same standards and Joe I'm sorry if I make you mad but let me tell you it's not it is not the teachers necessarily we have lost the family structure and you know when we seem to think it's okay to blame teachers alone for it that's a bad move right we need to figure out how do we hold parents accountable for it because until we do that you know teachers spend about if i remember the uh, stats correctly Teachers spend about 11.2% of a child's life in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. And when I say teachers, I'm not talking about one teacher. I'm talking about all teachers. Right, 11.2%. Right. It could be, it could even be 15%. The majority falls back on the parents. Mm -hmm. So if we want to hear, I mean, look, if we want to hold teachers accountable, let's start, let's start talking about holding parents accountable you know so many people they don't want to do that yeah. I do yeah okay let's let's go to CC on the line CC are you with us CC go ahead mm, I got the wrong line I think CC are you with us before I get to my question okay I just want to make a comment on uh, what Mr. Glover was just talking about, mm -hmm. uh, how he's being held responsible. Yes. First of all, it starts at the home, okay? Mm -hmm. Teachers can only teach the children so much. It starts at home. If the parent mm -hmm. put it in those children to do their homework at home, it would be easier on that teacher mm -hmm. for those children to come home get their homework and it would be more easy for the teacher to teach that child it starts at home mm -hmm. now i help my daughter raise my four grandchildren now my daughter worked two jobs now when my grandkids came home from work from school when they walked through that door, they spoke. They could not watch a TV. They could not do eat or snack or anything until they pulled off their clothes, the school clothes, did their homework, showed it to me. Mm -hmm. Then they ate their snack. Then they watched TV or went outside did what they had to do. But I made sure their homework was done before they did anything. Now. My grandson, he's 26 now, went to the Marines. My oldest granddaughter, she's 23, was 24. The other one, she's 22. And I got an 18 year old graduating this year from Maplewood. Oh, congratulations. But the 22 and the, tw the 23 and the 24 year old, they work it and they got their own business. That's great. You make that child do what she need, what they need to do at home, it's easier on that teacher. Mm -hmm. And it, plus, it wouldn't be so much juvenile crime in the street. Totally agree, Cece. It would be so much easier on that teacher. Mm -hmm. It does not all fall on that teacher, it starts at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cece, we appreciate yeah, you. Did, what, did you have a question? My question okay. about yes. Dr. Dr. Joseph. Yes. Now, Dr. Joseph have a whole lot of 
schools and workers that he has to watch over and all of that. But my thing is, they gave him three years to get everything together. Now, they not to me, they're not giving him a chance, just like they did Garcia. You have to give these people a chance to pull together and work. And they need to work with him instead of criticizing him for what he's trying to do. I understand uh, uh, he, we, we all make mistakes. Instead of them criticizing him, they need to help him get this school system together because it is about the children. All of this is about the children. Instead of them pulling straws from one side and to, to the other side, that's not going to help anything when it comes to our children. Okay. Cece, thank so, you so much for weighing in. I want to give I want to give um, Steve a chance to weigh in on what you've had to say. Has Has Dr. Joseph had a fair shake here in his three years? Well, I mean, I think so. I mean, um, you know, um, there'll be people who, who say he has not. I believe he has. Um, you know, certain things are required. If you're the director of schools, then you should hire people around you that make sure silly things are not missed so mm -hmm. for me I mean I'm not on the school board I can't say yay or nay on his contract but I don't think we've really missed the point uh, so let's assume tomorrow mm -hmm. they let him go what's next that's the good question have we se have we seen a plan I haven't that's the real question what's next mm -hmm. what do we do next and so it's 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 a challenge. Okay. We have to take another quick break and Tony and Linda, I know you're on the line. We're going to get to you as soon as we get back.